And we're back. With some more oxygen not included. And today it's time for a little bit of a refocus on what's important. We're trying to make a colony here that's completely labor free. Uh, well, that is the end game, end game goal. In the intermediate term, we're they're going to have to do a whole bunch of work. But that means we need to knock out one thing. Research. That's the main stumbling block. Until we've knocked out all the research, like we can't have a, a labor free base with beach chairs, for example. We need those. And to get those, we need data analysis research, which requires orbital research. So we need to get into space. To get into space, well, we're going to need to deal with the uh, extreme meteor showers we've got enabled on this map. So we're going to need a lot of steel. So, oh, and for the steel, we're probably going to want to access all of these uh, ancient specimen fossil stuff. We need to get all four of them, and that'll give us a whole bunch of fossil to make more steel. More importantly, I want more labor. 14 duplicates is not enough for that sort of stuff. So to get that, we've already got the food. So all we need now is oxygen. So I'm thinking we're going to put a giant electrolyzer right here that's going to provide the oxygen for, say, about 28 to 30 duplicates. The votes are in, and it seems the Rodriguez has won the day, as opposed to a Hydra or Soggy Sopom or whatever that's called. Now, the, the, uh, the Rodriguez has a little bit of a weird history behind it in that I think some people hate it now. Um, you know what? We'll, we'll build it first, and then I'll kind of give you a demonstration of why it's it's sort of loved and hated simultaneously. It's a, it's a weird scenario, but let, let, let's just start. Very, very simple thing. At the time when these things were, well, when oxygen production at, back then, we're talking a long time ago, it was about ooh, September 2019 is, is sort of before the Rodriguez sort of uh, had a tutorial made on it. Before that point, a lot of these, th th this whole soggy soap on thing didn't exist. How did people make oxygen before that? Well, in interesting ways, very interesting ways. So this little beauty here used to be one of the more popular designs. thing is it only really produces 888 grams of oxygen, but it is self-cooled. Weezworts back then didn't require fertilizer to give you the full cooling. Mm. Good old days. Anyway, so back in the olden times of September 2019, I had to do a bunch of Google searching to try and fig like to find the old tutorials because they've kind of been just swamped in like lost to the past, so to speak. But this was probably one of the more popular ones. However, there were other. For example, stuff like this, not too uncommon. I mean, the whole thought was the oxygen would just fall into your base and it didn't require you to put power into your gas pumps or anything like that. So it was seen as a thing. I mean, you might stifle your crops later on, but you'd probably do something to take care of that later. Probably. Or, or your, your base would collapse horrifically. Who knew? I mean, that was half the job. I remember looking at this tutorial back in the day. And, and I mean, I just... Don't get me wrong, these things were very useful, but I was like, that looks horrible. It's not square, it doesn't fit inside four tiles. It was just, that one, this type of design was too messy for me, which is why I wanted to design my own types. But yeah, these were, these were the standards of the time. Stuff like this did exist, but these ones looked like a lot of empty space. I mean, like, you can see the guts of the Rodriguez designs, or even the four tile high single kilo auction ones. All of these things existed, it was just... There was nothing too unified, nothing too uniform, and everything ended up being too complicated and covered in a lot of automation that people didn't There's also stuff like this. I picked this up from one of Brothgar's old tutorials. You can see the uh, the electrolyzer design on the right. That's more the, the standard of the day, which was one electrolyzer, and he was experimenting around with an extra large electrolyzer there on the left. And you can see a lot of the ideas that kind of end up going into Rodriguez's and stuff like that there. It's just, it's all a little bit weird and spread out. So I did find this one. This was released in, I think it was August of 2019. And this person has what looks very, like this basically looks like a half Rodriguez. It's maybe like about one tile taller than normal. But it's only got about three and a half thousand views. Uh, so I don't think this one really hit the mainstream, so to speak, or it didn't just sort of penetrate into the public consciousness. But yeah, this is this is pretty, pretty much a half Rodriguez with a, a very complex cooling loop involving a bunch of, you know, never mind. I got sucked into a rabbit hole on that one too, but it's just interesting looking back at all the old designs and how they mutated. So let's throw together the uh, good old-fashioned Rodriguez. Now, uh, <laughs> and, and compare, contrast, see what made it take off, or what made it, well, not take off, made it so attractive to newer players. One thing that people seem to hate is, some people refer to uh, a SOPOM, Self-Powered Auction Maker, S-P-O-M, and a Rodriguez as the same thing, and it, it kind of became an interchangeable word for a while, which drove some people a little bit crazy. Um, I, I don't know, I, I get it, I suppose. If something, like, it's sort of the way jacuzzis are actually hot tubs, they're not actually jacuzzis. Or wait, is this the right? Yeah, no, jacuzzi's the brand. Whatever, it, it's basically a brand becoming a name for something, and some people got a little bit frustrated with that. But I think the main sticking point of something like these that drove a, a lot of, uh, well, drove some dislike, not, I don't want to say a lot, uh, 
it was just a case of it killed a lot of the creativity. Like, you saw some of those weird designs we showed up. They were not, like, most of them were very different from each other, and everyone had different ideas and what it was going on. The problem was, when a solid idea is found in Oxygen Not Included, what normally happens is, well, everyone just sort of takes that idea and runs with it because it's the most efficient way of doing something. And that's happened with, well, more than a few designs. Uh, for example, how many ranches have you seen that contain this sort of exact design? Even down to that little pneumatic door trick. Oh, I keep forgetting about that one, but that one is so handy. Like, there's all sorts of little designs, or even kitchen designs, or bedrooms, or bathrooms, or... There's all these things that have just been found out. Uh, like, four years ago or so, back in 2019, not all of this stuff had been codified. There was no codex of what you build, no design guides. You have to just sort of figure thing out, look at Let's Plays, and just sort of wing it half the time. Oh, I am deadly sure there were better oxygen makers and better everything out there. But the problem is they were probably hidden on the clay forum or somewhere on a Reddit or, you know, they were just lost and misplaced everywhere. None of them had actually sort of ingrained themselves. And there it is mostly completed. Let's turn this sucker on and see what makes it so... average, I suppose. That was sort of the power, I think, or sort of is the power of this. It's a very average but solid build that just kind of works. You know, um, hmm. you know what, let's go over the basics here. Power. Uh, power comes in off this line over here and feeds most of it. You see, the thing is, this thing can't be fed off a single conductive wire. You need a second line, otherwise you're going to get some uh, power overloading. And then what happens is, the hydrogen gets fed into these generators up here, just like a normal soap, soap pump. And that hydrogen is what actually powers the whole build and makes sure the whole thing is self-contained. And you end up with a nice, reasonably rectangular brick that just spits out three kilos of oxygen. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's uh, hook this up here. And thankfully, I have a bunch of hydrogen close by. Normally, what you do is you just chuck down some coal generators to bootstrap this and get it started. But we have uh, just oodles of hydrogen over here, so we're just going to run a hydrogen generator to get this sucker started. Oh, and we might want to start pumping a bit here. If the pressure in here is above, I think it's 250 for the top one and 450 for the bottom. I'm going to actually have to look this up because I forget every time. And uh, they should start pumping. And right now what we've done is we've set them all up to high pressure gas vents. Why? Well, because that's that's the way you do it. Uh, you just want to empty this area out and reduce the pressure in here as much as possible. We could turn this into an entire vacuum, though I don't think that's necessary. And a little bit power starved, but that's okay. The hydrogen's flowing. There we go. Two generators going. Soon there'll be a third. I should really hook up those automation wires. That would uh, save us a lot of hydrogen there that I just burnt off. Uh, high threshold will be 90. Low threshold will be 60. Perfect. It doesn't really matter too much as long as we're not wasting too much hydrogen, which I just did a load of wasting of. Uh, one second, I'll hook this all back up again. Let's just vacuum this whole thing out. It'll make our lives easier. This is not completely necessary, but it does make it a little bit faster to stabilize the gases. Oh, damn it, I used airflow tiles instead of mesh tiles. Ah, uh, you're supposed to use mesh tiles in here because if liquids get in there, this gets... Uh, you won't be able to see them on top of the airflow tiles. Mm, you know what? I'm not breaking back in there. I am willing to live with that risk. Let's just... Let's just live dangerous. It's casual playthrough. Casual playthrough. Let's just... Let's just be casual about it. Okay, uh, ambient pressure. If this goes above 450 grams, gas pumps at the bottom will activate. If this is above 250 grams, gas pump at the top will activate. And then water-wise... Wait, where's that gas going? Yeah, perfect. And liquid-wise, we've got the water ready to come in from here. All right, there you go. Now, as that comes in there, you're going to notice a, uh, a split. The hydrogen's going to go up the top. The oxygen's going to go down the bottom. And after a while, they should start to stabilize that. Ugh. Mess. First thing you want to do is make sure that the hydrogen is just going to dump out. You want that to dump out. You don't want it mixing with the actual hydrogen going into your hydrogen generators, or you're going to get damaged generators and all sorts of mess. So you just dump the whole mess out. Oxygen, you got to make sure it's hooked up to these high pressure gas vents or gas tanks if you don't have access to high pressure gas vents, as in plastic. And you just got to make sure this thing keeps pumping because you got to make sure that the hydrogen stabilizes. It's going to take, oh, about there, stabilized. Okay, uh, let's just switch this to gases so it's much clearer. You can see the entire top layer is that nice pink hydrogen color, or is that purple? You know what, who cares? It's done. Now what we can do is we can sever this line here. And we can sever that line there. In fact, let's do something. Yep, there you go. You go to there, and actually you go, can go to there. 
Yeah, we got a little bit of an overflow of hydrogen. That's fine. That's fine. I, yeah, I've never actually run this from full hydrogen to start before. Hey, uh, you guys over here, we want you to start hooking up and processing onwards. So you can go to there, you can go to there, and you can go to there. Then we can sever those suckers right there, right there, and that high pressure gas vent can go. We now have the ability to produce three kgs of oxygen per second, so long as we keep feeding it enough water. Like, a lot of water. It's going to take a fair chunk. And I've done a little bit of preliminary pipe work here to help us along. Come on. Done. There we go. So that's going to come up here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to sever this section and introduce the new ones. And I know severing makes me uncomfortable as well when I say that. All right, you. You're going to go there, you're going to go straight on, and you're going to go straight on. Then a little bit of snippity, snippity, snappity. Done. Um, hmm. Then I want to make sure they get the full cooling treatment. So, how is I going to do this again? You go there. You go there. And you go there. Snip, 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 snap. Damn it. Done. And then we cancel any pipes we tried to overwrite with. Oh, yeah. These guys got to be hooked up down here as well. Yep, yep, yep. And you go across to there, you go across to there, and the third one, well, yeah, we'll figure out right where you're going in a minute. Um, mm, nope, done, done. And leave you connected. I think that should allow the oxygen production to continue as normal with almost no interruptions. But now we've gone from one and a half kilos to two. All right. And we still somehow managed to pump in some nasty gas in there. There's some oxygen right there. You know what? Let's uh, save ourselves a little bit of hassle on that front. Someone deconstruct that pipe segment and we can replace it. Then we can seal in this whole area and make sure that it's uh, energy cooling efficient. Uh, there was a little bit of messy piping there, but we fixed it, and I think we're mostly done. We still have to hook up an overflow for the hydrogen, but by and large, this uh, this system is now up and functional. Let's just have a, a quick go over the advantages and why this why this just seems like a handy little oxygen production facility. The first thing is, it produces three kilos of oxygen. You don't have to care, it'll just churn out three kilos. One kilo from each of the two pumps at the bottom. Uh, in fact, these things produce about 16 kilos, so theoretically you can get 3.2 something kilos of oxygen produced by these electrolyzers, but there's, it's too awkward with an uneven number of gas pumps and stuff like that. This is what sort of made this so attractive, is if you wanted, say, 2 kilos of oxygen, you'd need 3 electrolyzers, which made for an uneven build. These 4 just produce enough hydrogen that one gas pump can handle it. For every 4 electrolyzers, you're going to need one gas pump for the hydrogen. This means doing it in stages of four just was convenient. So one kilo of oxygen was convenient, two kilos was sort of inconvenient, and three kilos was better, and everyone kind of went to 20 plus duplicates, so this sort of just ended up being a nice, easy to produce one that worked out quite nicely. Uh, I think actually kind of want to do a little bit more history on this, because I've just been looking back through some of the threads, and it's kind of weird to see where the oxygen not, not included community was when stuff like this was just being designed, because we keep forgetting, most of this game was like, we were playing just brutally badly. We were just, we were horrendous, and things just slowly refined over time as people got better and better at building things. If the timeline of, of Ani's history with oxygen production doesn't interest you, you, you can just skip to the timestamp. That'll, that'll bring you back to, to more gaming. But uh, I just have to go through this, because it's just sort of weird to look back on this. Anyway, about uh, four years ago, Nicolas Rodriguez gave me a link to an Imager post, and it's basically here, because I, I couldn't figure out how to make a three kilo per second oxygen production facility. I tried a few designs, hadn't got anything, and they'd link me to this Imager post. I'll link it in the description as well. And I was like, yes, this is perfect. This is an awesome design. This seems fairly easy, reasonable to build. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to steal that idea. Uh, unfortunately, it's not exactly what I ended up building. Um, about a month later, I... I Went with this design. It's got a little hood hop up here. You'll notice that there's not that in the original. This was to do with how gases flowed back then. It turns out because of the way the gases flowed, if you tried to use the original design, you wouldn't get three kilos. You'd get usually about 2.75. Whereas if you put this hood up like this, you'd get about 2.975, which meant you could get an extra couple of duplicates. As long as you put that little hood on top. Then later on, they upgraded the gases, so this hood was no longer necessary. I don't know when that happened, but it was years later before I retested it and realized I needed the hood. Uh, not necessary to the story, but whatever. This is like a month later, so this is May 2019 or something. And then in about it was September 10th, 2019, I put up a tutorial about this thing. And honestly, see, like, I didn't 
designed this. This whole thing, my only additions to this, we're putting a box on top to contain the, the hydrogen generators and some of the power stuff. That's it. So like this entire design isn't even mine. Uh, this middle one here, also not mine. It's more just a stripped down version of it. And that one had become uh, semi-popular as well. Uh, this one on the left, this one I actually did design because I wanted something that was small and would fit inside four tiles. This one actually, eh, I still like this one. Doesn't quite have the oomph, but hey, kilo of oxygen, four tile design, well, it was pretty okay. But let's look and see what else was going on around this time. Remember, this is the uh, 10th of September, 2019. Oh my god, that feels like that's not that long ago, but it really was. This is a Google search, but it's limited to before the 9th of September, 2019, and we've limited it to Reddit. And then we just opened all the posts just to see what was going on. And these are the pictures of the designs for soap bombs that were floating around at the time. Yeah, they were, um, they were very, very, very simplistic. It usually only had one electrolyzer. And, you know, it's just, it's weird looking back that this was how we built them all back then. There was nothing too crazy. Super simplistic. This one actually has oxygen just getting dropped directly out the bottom. I mean, okay, the, the hydrogen gets collected, but then it uses as a gas filter. Uh, this one here is actually built around an anti instrument modifier with doors under the wheezewort so you could turn them on and off to control oxygen flow. Don't know why that, that thing is up in the corner. Like, like I said, I just opened the top 10. Then, yeah, this one's dropping oxygen at the bottom again. This one's actually pumping at, like, it's just, it's crazy when you're looking at these. This one, it looks very reminiscent of the popular design at the time, but it's, it's also got a gas filter on it. Uh, this one is the original. Q Quasar. They posted it on February 13th, 2018. So this is like an entire year earlier they'd put up this one. And this one became pretty much the standard from what I can tell for about a year. It was the most popular variant for about a year. So this stuff didn't really change for a long time. Oh, and this is uh, this is their previous att the attempt the previous day where they kind of overcomplicated it slightly, they claimed. And I do love the quote, uh, Ox self powered oxygen module or SOPOM. That's a stupid name. Note to self, we never use that name for any reason. We can't let it catch on. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, this, hugely popular. Because it was efficient, compact, did the job, and was self powered. You know, you just put in water, you got out oxygen, you didn't have to worry about it. Oh, God. Yeah, this. I also found these guides back then. Like, there was guides for on how to do the, the ore scrubbers. I don't even know if they're still in the game. They were for removing germs from ores so you wouldn't bring germs into your base and stuff like that. I think it was for scrubbing algae to get the slime lung out of it so it wouldn't contaminate your oxygen. Oh, and oh, where is it? Yes, fertilizers used to be natural gas positive. Yeah, I think we've kind of gone into uh, history here. Oh, and this is a steam vent tamer using wheezewarts. Yes, yes, this is... Oh my god, this stuff was so weird. Anyway, yeah, this is this is some of the guides. Now, I just kind of want to give context to this. Uh, this auction production thing, the, the tutorial for this didn't go out until, like, whatever, 10th of September, 2019. Uh, to put that in perspective, this is March 2019. Uh, yeah, this is, like, many, 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 many months before the, the Rodriguez got, you know, any airtime. We, we were making petroleum boilers then. We had counterflow heat exchangers figured out. We were hooked up to volcanoes boiling petroleum. And yet our oxygen production still looked like this. <laughs> like, everything else moves so much faster. Like, this, this was a petroleum boiler about two months earlier, which was like we were pouring magma in here and then we'd mine it out manually and then we'd have to come back every so often to pour sometimes in more magma from the magma biome that we were pitcher pump removing. But then... Two months later, we had this. Oxygen production stayed at this for over two years. It's crazy. It's crazy. I just look back at it now and I'm like, were we idiots? Or like, it just took us so long to come up with anything new or uh, that's the wrong way to look at it, I suppose. It's just the game is called Oxygen Not Included. And we didn't figure out what way we wanted to include the oxygen until way later than we first figured out how to boil petroleum. I suppose our our priorities were in the right place. We wanted the, the power to run our industries, and the oxygen was an afterthought for the workers. Who cares? Who cares about the workers? Who cares if they get their oxygen? We were fine. Oh, okay, that was just a weird trip down memory lane on that one. One thing I never covered here was how... One thing I never covered here was how bombs have changed over the years. Like, this is just a, a search from, well, basically just this year, so the last six months. And you'll see that bombs have basically evolved, but now it's more they're trying to build in self-cooling systems and things like that to them, but... Basically, the designs have sort of stabilized. You, once you hit a certain level, there's no real kind of refinement that can go on with the basic ones. 
Until, of course, you start getting into the more submerged bombs and stuff like that. Uh, that one actually looks incredibly interesting because it just spits oxygen out. It's a little overpressurized in area, sure, but eh, kind of handy. Oh, and if you're looking for a, a big compendium of lots of stuff, I cannot recommend Karnath's guides enough. This thing has a whole bunch of, well, as you can see, randomized stuff in it. It covers everything to do with the electrolyzers. Also, some of the more exotic variants. Uh, where is it? Ah, uh, yes, the submerged variants, especially ones without walls, all sorts of weird waterfall variants, all sorts of random junk like that. There's loads of really good stuff in here. I'll link that in the description as well. If you're looking for some inspiration or to try some things, some of these I would never dare attempt on the grounds that they just look far too unstable and I'd be worried on a laggy load and they just all crack collapse. But if you're braver than I, there's plenty of fun stuff here in, in here you could try. In fact, I think we're going to nick one of the ideas from Karnat's Guides. Uh, we are going to dig out a tile right here, because there's a block of sand. That sand is going to fall down, and it's going to submerge that flower pot. And then we are going to put in a pneumatic door for this flower pot, and we're going to transfer a critter over here. And... submerged. Excellent. Now, I'll be back in one second with a pip. People have commented that this uh, whole narcoleptic thing is not really that inconvenient, it doesn't seem to be a problem. I, I suppose I have been cutting out the annoyances where they drop crit critters that they're supposed to be transporting, or fish eggs, or fish, or pretty much anything, and the amount of times they get- oh, don't- don't go in there. Stay- yep. Great, now we just gotta hope that a duplicate can get down here and get them up to the location they want to go without dropping them a second time. Not that this has happened in the past, multiple times. Ugh. It's fine. It's fine. It just makes things uh, a little bit... You have to be just a little bit more careful with things. And they made it. Whole way. Perfect. Perfect. Now, what are we about to do here again? Oh, yes. We need to get ourselves a seed. And we chucked down a wart seed in here. And if there's a wart seed here, the pip will at some point decide it's going to plant it in the only available tile, which is, well, this sandy tile right here. Well, perfect. Thank you kindly. Now, the thing is, the tile is entombed, but we can dig out the tile, and this thing is still going to stay here. In theory. I don't know, I haven't tested this in ages. And... boom. Chili wheeze wart, and it does not require phosphorite, as far as I'm aware. Now, this is... it basically allows you a way to get to plant wheeze warts in a flower pot. You used to be able to do that in the past, but once they changed them so that they were required fertilizer and things like that, you couldn't do it anymore. And that meant you have to pay for them. So if we say click on this buddy bud and we were to uproot it, we couldn't plant a wheeze wart in there. Because it just won't let us. It doesn't show up in the menu. Thing is, you can actually... Well, they didn't actually get rid of the ability for wheeze warts to grow in them. They just removed your ability to plant them. Which means if you can somehow trick the game into planting one, what you can do is just hit copy and paste. So the menu is gone to remove the option to plant them. But the ability is still there, so long as you can get one in originally and then just maybe do a little copy thingy. So now we can plant all of our wheeze warts without ever having to pay any of the fertilizer costs. And we can just plant them in flower pots anywhere. Which is, uh, great. In fact, can you copy that over to things like this? Oh, no. Pity. And there we go. We've got portable wheeze wart cooling. Because I would like to make this even chillier. Or, actually what would probably be better is... Dumping all our wheeze warts up here with the anti-entropy nullifier to make this entire area even more freezing. That should keep our oxygen cool for just that, that little bit longer without us having to, you know, make any real effort at all. Ah, uh, yes. Wonderful, wonderful abuses. Nothing like playing on a little bit casual. Alright, and as well as that, I want to try and root some more of that oxygen down into our base. And, oh, we've hired a new duplicate as well. Well, we won't give anyone names until they actually graduate. For now, they're going to stay in here until they've accumulated, uh, ooh, about eight skill points. Once they've got eight skill points and almost 20 athletics, we'll let them out. Until then, you're on the wheels. The next thing I'd like to do is take care of the hydrogen overflow. This is not going to compress the hydrogen like the last design, so we need to find some way of disposing of the hydrogen. And letting it just sort of float up to the top of the base does not seem like the best idea. No. Submerging the wheeze warts in hydrogen would definitely help their... Uh chilling effects. Uh, ooh, actually, hmm, we might be able to help that out. If we just deconstruct that temp, temp shift plate, wall that in there. Oh, actually, no, we wouldn't be able to access all of the, the props in here. Never mind. Leave it, leave it, leave it. But we can let more of that hydrogen up there if we wanted to. I just don't think we care enough just yet. Instead, what we want to do is hook this up to the main grid somehow. 
and I would like to run our power spine continuously straight up. The problem is, this liquid lock is in the way, so we're going to need to compress this down a bit and make it a little bit more uh, friendly for that power cable passing through right here. Now, removing this is uh, a bit of a problem. I'm not sure if we can make this work. What I would like to do is try and maybe get in a sneaky mop command just to mop it up, otherwise we're going to have to stick in a liquid pump and things are going to get messy. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to get messy no matter what we do. Come on. Nah, too much liquid straight away. Yeah, well, that was probably going to happen. And... anyone? Yay! We got in one mop command. Will this be enough to actually allow us to mop up the rest? I severely doubt it. It used to be if you got off a mop command, they would mop no matter how much water liquid occupied that tile afterwards. So they would mop for effectively eternity. Allowed you to mop up huge spills if you could just get that one down. Come on. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Fine. They got 200 kilos and then they're like, you know what? We give up. But if we replace the block and then remove it again, shouldn't it give us the opportunity to do that a second time? Well, there was probably a simpler way of doing that, but eh. That was just felt a lot easier. Now all we gotta do is put down some blobs of naphtha to make ourselves a more miniaturized liquid lock. Then all we do is we wall in a bunch of areas, uh, then we remove those two, and remove those, and we should have a... Yep. Yeah. What are you? Where did the polluted water come from? I just disrupt... I deconstructed a pipe, didn't I? Ah, oh, god damn it. Yeah, this is going to take me a while. I'm going to have to get the polluted oxygen out of there that's inevitably going to form in here. And ah! I'm kind of hoping this naphtha is going to hit off that wall and bounce back a little bit, but hey, it does too. That is actually perfect. Um, excellent. Now all we got to do is get rid of that polluted oxygen from out of there. That was far less painful than I thought it was going to be. Okay then, uh, so we get rid of that polluted auction with a bit of a gas pump, uh, everything else goes back to normal. Let's just make sure I haven't severed anything else while I was doing my very, very sloppy deconstructing. Well, that turned out to be only mildly painful, but perfect. We've now got a complete vacuum seal so that inside here this heat cannot escape out. Yeah, I'm not even going to bother replacing the airflow tab. Yeah, but that means we can now deconstruct this one tile. We did all of that so that we could gain a little bit of space here on the edge. Now what this means is we can run a power up spine all the way up the center of the map. I was kind of worried when I realized that the power spine was going to go through, that had to go through here, that we wouldn't be able to squeeze this in, but eh, you can always come up with new forms of liquid locks. We could, we could squish it down even more if you wanted to. It's just I do not like using blob locks versus large mobs of steam un, unbacked up. I prefer these larger ones because they just do not fall over. These things just don't fail. These blob ones, yeah, they, if things get rough, they can get pushed out of the way. It's just the way of the world. Alright, let's move that power spine through. I really wish I could take credit for this next bit, but it turns out the Volcano Tamer we made earlier plugs directly into the power grid, which just happens to be nice. That's just convenient, you know, just the way it, it, it ended poking out just exactly where it needed to. Uh, with the power spine going up there, we've got this over here, hydrogen generator. We're going to burn off all our excess hydrogen here uh, instead of letting it escape, uh, but for the power-wise, we're going to use transformers in reverse, which is something that many people don't even realize can be done sometimes. Uh, what we can do here is get a... actually just a regular power transformer should be fine. We're going to rotate it this way. Um, then we're going to just plug it on to the grid. Instead of taking power off, we're putting power on. And that stops the overload going back up and frying anything back in this direction. Excellent. Now let's see how that works out. Power spine is complete. It's plugged into the hydrogen generator and the hydrogen generator is already getting its first overflow. See, this hydrogen is going to come up here and it's going to cycle all the way through these radiant pipes. This is sort of one of those uh, wonderful things where you use physics impossibly to delete heat. As in, this generates a bit of heat, but it also is going to spit the stuff out at whatever temperature the water is. And since the water is incredibly hot at, oh, 81 C, all of this 81C gases, plus all of the heat generated by the buildings in here, heats everything up even further. And then that hydrogen that's produced goes up here and then gets destroyed and the hydrogen generator is killing the heat. So this might top out at, say, 
90 degrees or even 95 or even 100. But as the hydrogen passes through, it's going to keep destroying that heat over and over again. So it'll never go above a certain amount. It's just a perfectly self-contained way of never having to worry about any of this overheating. Oh, and you don't have to place the hydrogen generators up here. You can centralize all of them and stuff like that. It's just, I traditionally prefer to dump everything on top and just be done with it. Uh, the hydrogen, though, later on, you're probably going to want to use that in hydrogen rockets or something along the lines, if you haven't gone full nuclear. But now what happens is it comes up here, it tries to get fed into the anti anti nullifier. If it can't fit into power, it goes to the anti anti nullifier. If it can't go there, it gets sent down to this, and then that dumps the power immediately onto the grid. Which brings us neatly all the way back to this little thing down here. You see, when we put this in, we made sure that there was lots of big power batteries here. Namely because, well... Yeah, this will just dump more power onto the grid. It gives us more storage space available. We could have used smart batteries, which would have lined up better with the smart battery we're using to control everything. But now we just have this extra storage space, which is going to come in handy when we start dumping more power on and made a petroleum boiler and all of that stuff. For our next step, we're going to get our hands on a bunch of fossil to make steel so that we can seal off the top of the map against all of those meteors. Uh, for that, we're going to deconstruct this and we're going to start digging down. Uh, Thinking one there, one there, and then one there, one there. We'd like to avoid this phosphorite if at all possible. I think that phosphorite starts dropping in here or gets involved in it. It has a tendency to flash. I've, I know this has happened to me before where I've started digging into magma or something hot and then phosphorus has touched something and decided it wants to melt and then turn into gas shortly there afterwards. So we're not going to go near that stuff. In fact, we're going to dig across and then we should be able to dig straight down. What we're trying to get to is this down here. And I'm thinking we can do a ladder system down here. And we can make it out of obsidian as well. Might as well. We've got the stuff available. I am getting a little tired of duplicates showing up, mining a tile, running away. Someone else comes along to actually do the build tasks. Someone else comes along to do the digging tasks. So that keeps bouncing up and down from miles away. Now what we're going to do is... You're here. You're staying here, Matthew. Your job is to dig and to build. And you can't leave here until it's done. And what we'll do is we'll cancel all of that. And we'll cancel all of that. That way they should be able to quickly and efficiently get down there. I should probably check to make sure as well that they don't have uh, any scheduling conflicts. It's, I don't want them to try and, like, you know, pee their pants here. That would be bad. We have a few tiles left on their schedule. We'll wait until they're getting close to downtime, then we'll let them out. Or they decide to have a nap. God damn it. <laughs> it's just like, you're on a time limit and every time they're like, No, 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 we're just going to take a nap. It's cool, it's cool, it'll be fine. Yeah, I remember why this was such an annoyance to deal with and why I put it down as one of those one of those traits you never pick because it just makes everything worse and harder to do. And off they go. Uh, you know what? We'll let someone else back in here to finish this off. Why not? I'm sure we've got someone else who can dig abyssalite. And down here we'll put down another liquid blob and this will be sort of a vacuum chamber and we should be able to get in here and... Ooh, they've got sticksters and everything. Huh. How long have those sticksters been around here? Ah, uh, never mind. I... Yeah, I think they only spawned in when we got this close. They weren't revealed when this was revealed. And... done. Okay, now I just want to make sure that nothing here is going to flash to horrific gases if we decide to put a blob of naphtha right there. I think we're good. Yeah, yeah, I think we'll be fine. Alright, let's open the door and see if this does work correctly or it goes horribly wrong. Alright, there goes the first blobs of naphtha. That is actually perfect. And it's been removed safely. Okay, that means we can safely get in here and extract this, and once we've got this one, the other two should be easy peasy. Let the science begin! That's another petrified fossil knocked out of the way. Well, it will be once our scientist gets here and starts nodding their head at it. Actually, Ratey? Why are you here? Uh, somehow this seems to require the skills of a masterwork artist. That's, um, but that's probably it. So it gives a use for artists outside of their normal thing. And it seems once we've unlocked all four of this, we get access to a cache of, uh, well, an extra large cache of fossil, which fossil you crush up into lime and lime you make into steel. So it's basically a giant steel bonus. Huh. That's one of the reasons I always look for, like, would I be doing base loving videos? I'd always be checking for fossil on the map because everyone always complained they never had enough steel. And I'm like, just, just mine out all the fossil on your map. You'll have plenty of steel. And then it just sort of turned into... Is there any fossil left? Because ugh, people would always leave fossil behind. And I'm pretty bad this round so far. We haven't actually gotten around to mining it out, but if we look under... Can, where is it? Minerals. See all that red stuff? That's fossil. 
and fossil is juicy, juicy steel. So we're going to have to excavate all that stuff out at some point in the near future. But for now, there is two more things we need to excavate out. This fossil and that fossil. And considering how close we are, this should be fairly straightforward and simple. This says, unlocking full access to the fossil cache buried underneath the ancient specimen requires excavation of all deposit sites. So... I presume I have to, like, ex well, what I'm hoping is the last one I excavate is the one where they give us all the fossil, because I want to make sure that's the closest one. I, for example, did not want this to be the last one we extracted in case it gave us a bunch of stuff down there that we had to transport huge distances. I probably should have left the other one, which I can't even remember where we put it at. Ah, this one here. That one might have been slightly closer. No, no, this one will be fine. Assuming someone gets around at some point to... Wait, why are you missing a tile? Oh, I think I know what's going on. I'm pretty sure this is some sort of thing involved in the extraction process, so... That means we're going to have to put a tile there. And yes, okay, so this requires more space. Once this is excavated, we'll try the last one on bread. I'm pretty sure this is where we're going to be getting our sustainable fossil from, because I think that's what it does. I'm vaguely remembering this from a comment I read somewhere. And with completion, we get... Uh, nothing? Okay, fine. We will excavate this one as well, and then we'll go after the fossil fragments. We will take those two. We need all the fossil we can get if we want enough steel. Actually, how much steel are we up to? 50 tons? Uh, I think we actually have enough fossil already to wall at the top of the map. Yeah, there should be sufficient quantities, but uh, we'll worry about that in a minute. For now, I just want to finish this off. So... complete it? Eh, hey, fossils trait complete ancient specimen. Right, my duplicates have meticulously reassembled as much of the giant's critter's scattered remains as they could find. Their efforts have unearthed a seemingly bottomless fossil quarry beneath the largest fragments dig site. Nestled among the topmost bones were handcrafted critter collars. It's too large to have belonged to any species traditionally categorized as companion animals. You see, they got collars on them? Ah. Huh. Okay, and uh, we now have a giant critter collar that we can stick on top of stuff. Great, great. No mining orders queued. Yeah, let's try. Ingredients. Oh, you put in a kilo of diamond and you get out a hundred kilos of fossil. Okay, that's not bad. I'm not sure I'm sold on that just yet, though. Unfortunately, I think that's all we've got time for today. I can't think of a small project we could squeeze in. Though I do have to start getting the fish out of here. Uh, the problem is when the eggs are eaten down here with the fish, they've started overcrowding, which could cause all their numbers to crash out. So I moved all the eggs up here, but I think we're going to have to automate that so we don't have to keep coming down and doing it again and again. But for now, I'm going to cut this out here. I think next up, space. It's got to be. We need to get that research knocked out. Once we get the research knocked out, we've kind of unlocked most of the stuff we need. Okay, we'll have to check the other planets just because they're there, but we got to start then designing a base that's completely self-sustained. Now we'll know exactly what kind of vents and geysers we're dealing with and exactly what we can design and how much we can support. Oh. And we're going to keep hiring duplicates in the background till we hit about 20, 25-ish or something like that, depending. We need a few mechatronics engineers. Currently, we've got one cook and only one mechatronics engineer, so that needs to change. Anyway, I think we might do another episode tomorrow because I kind of, well, I really, really want to get a few things done in here. And I just, I don't want to put them off till next week. So maybe a little bit more Ani tomorrow. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.